And it's uh, my pleasure to uh, uh, introduce Zhao Chi. He's uh, uh, from Hong Kong and uh, a long-term colleague of ours and friend. And uh, we're uh, going to hear a talk from him about Lipschitz like properties relative to, to a set of some applications. So uh, please go ahead. Yep. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Uh, yeah, this is a recent work uh, uh, with my uh, former students, uh, Meng Kai Wen and the postdoc Li Minghua and uh, the current student, uh, Wen Fang Liao. Uh, yeah, let me uh, go through a moment. So uh, they all started from some motivation and the literature review and uh, the necessary and sufficient condition for the Lipschitz like property and uh, possible application if I have time to a uh, level state uh, mapping. Um, so why we uh, come to uh, to study this uh, Lipschitz like property? Well, actually, uh, it's a new area for me. This uh, error bound, and uh, of course, I'm doing variational analysis for error bound. The Lipschitz like uh, it's kind of new to me. So, but however, um, we have done something uh, in machine learning. Uh, say if we have uh, we we did something uh, for the recovery bounds. So, which is, uh, I, uh, say, uh, so suppose we have this linear system AX uh, is equal to B plus E. Right? So E here is kind of a noisy uh, victim. Then, uh, so the, the problem here is to find a sparse vector X uh, as sparse as possible to, to satisfy certain applications. Right? So uh, this is a linear system, but it's under uh, determined the many, many solutions. Because uh, A is supposed to be a, a small number of uh, uh, rows, uh, many, many number of the uh, uh, columns. Uh, so originally in machine learning, uh, we, we can formulate this problem. So we, we can minimize uh, this uh, kind of zero norm uh, of X. So zero norm is the uh, norm zero or number of entries for, for X vector. Then uh, we have noisy uh, vector E that we uh, formulate the constraint as AX minus B, uh, the two norm is less than or equal to epsilon. So this is a kind of a zero norm uh, constraint optimization problem. So uh, it, it, it is known that zero norm, uh, this is with the zero norm, this is an NPR problem. So it's not easy to solve. So in machine learning, then the people use the one norm. So one norm is convex. Now we have a con convex objective function, then we have a convex constraint. All right. So in that case, then people want to find out uh, kind of uh, to estimate uh, the, the original solution that we want to find out, the sparse solution uh, AX bar is equal to B. So that's what we want. Then we want to uh, find out the relation of this, uh, uh, of this L1 uh, norm uh, optimization problem with the X bar. So in that case, there are many studies in uh, machine learning. Uh, uh, society. So there are under some condition, then uh, we can have this kind of recovery bound. So we have this, um, the, the solution of the, uh, the pro optimization problem, uh, the distance to the exact solution can be bounded by the epsilon in terms of this order one, this, the, the, the power of epsilon is one. Right? So in that case, but however, we say here, as we can say in the constraint, the epsilon here uh, as, a, as a perturbation uh, uh, parameter. So epsilon here must be uh, non negative. So in this sense here, we have a recurve bound. So epsilon here is not arbitrarily uh, small, but epsilon it is small, but it is non negative. Right. So uh, that's one uh, case. Then also if we, can also formulate that uh, zero norm uh, uh, sparse optimization problem as this L1 regularization model, or it's called a NASO in machine learning. So we can we can have another uh, formulation here, but the parameter here is 
somehow a uh, slight difference. The parameter here is, uh, is, uh, is a lambda. So lambda here now I put in, in front of this uh, uh, one norm here. Right. So this is some kind of course, this is the regularization problem actually to, to me, to us is this is a penalty problem. Right. So we are trying to satisfy the constraint here, x is, is equal to b. And also somehow we want to find out this L1 norm uh, as small uh, as possible, right? Because epsilon uh, lambda here is normally is small, right? So in that case, in this uh, sense here, we can there still uh, recover bounds uh, be uh, established, right? So in that case, we have this, uh, the bounds here now is the uh, uh, capital O uh, lambda square S. S here is the uh, index, the, the cardinality of the, uh, of the uh, X bar. Right. So we have in this sense, still here, the lambda here is uh, no uh, negative. Then uh, in, along this line, uh, we did something uh, to replace that L1 norm by uh, LQ norm. Right, so that's in this uh, one here. So that's some kind of, in, we can say it's a, a low order uh, penalty problem. Right. So in that case, for from here, we can also establish kind of, if we say the uh, global recovery bound, now we are talking about this um, X star lambda is a global solution of this uh, LQ regularization problem. Right. In, that, in that case, we can have a bound here where the uh, bounds to the power lambda is one over uh, two minus Q. Right. Then if we, uh, so here the X star is the uh, global solution. But if we go uh, to the local uh, recover bounds, since that is since now we are looking kind of, uh, looking for some kind of uh, trajectory, uh, X star lambda. So we allow lambda uh, goes to zero. So in that case, we can find out a kind of a long lambda goes to zero uh, trajectory x star lambda, which is satisfy this bound here. So in this way here now we can have a bound here, which is a, which is lambda. So lambda here now power is one. So in that case, this local uh, local recover bound is better than this uh, global uh, recovery bound. Of course, it's, it's meaningful because global bound uh, requires more information, local uh, recovery bound uh, requires less information. Right? So in that case, we have a kind of recovery bound for those uh, problems. So, uh, so in that case, actually, uh, just one, uh, one time, uh, probably one day, and we, we say, now we are doing this uh, kind of uh, recovery uh, bound, but those recovery bound, as we say, the X bar here, uh, X bar here is fixed. So only change here is X star lambda. So this is a, 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 a changing vectors here, X bar is fixed. So in uh, this property uh, is known as uh, the calmness property in, uh, in, in stability theory. So uh, actually, I, um, the, uh, my one of the students, Wen Fang Yao, he, she was uh, she's studying this uh, kind of Lipschitz uh, property, but without, without any uh, breakthrough after uh, after after some time. Right? But now uh, we say, why not we come to study this? Um, like we have we can have L one uh, regularization problem. We have LQ regularization problem. So why do we come to study this? Uh, Lipschitz like a property for the L L1 uh, regularization problem. So we come to, uh, we go to, to study that one. Then uh, if, how can we, if we, we, why not we study for the general case, uh, kind of uh, this uh, um, Lipschitz like a property, not in the global sense, but relative to a set, which is R uh, plus. Right. So that's how we come to this uh, problem here. So this is one motivation, um, time goes fast. Now another one here, the kind of uh, reinterpretation of the subgradient. Uh, in the uh, variational analysis book, uh, then these are uh, results about that. For this um, uh, 
uh, label set mapping. So now we have alpha here is a variable. Now v bar is fixed. Now f here now is uh, a function, but uh, might not be convex for the moment. Right. So in this case, we have this level set. We have this level set. So we can, uh, there's a result that this level set is uh, which is like property at this point for this x bar. If this v bar, if this v bar is not in this uh, subgradient set. Right. So in that case, uh, that's what uh, here. This result, this result can be observed by uh, this formula. So this basically is this uh, called derivative here. So that means if, if v bar is not in this uh, set, then now we have nothing in this one here. So if we have, so there's no lambda uh, non-zero, which make this one uh, to be zero. So something like that. So in that case, this result can be observed uh, from this one here. However, if we took a, a special case that if f is convex, now, if we take the R, R, um, that R bar as this, uh, consider this point. So, so because, the, uh, because the definition of this um, sub different, remember, this is sub differential uh, definition for the convex function, which is the uh, equality. In that case, if we conserve the level set again, then the domain of the level uh, set would be including all the alpha where the alpha is greater than or equal to this f x bar. Right. So in that case, if we consider at one point this f x bar, then this f x bar is in the boundary uh, of the domain of s. Right. So uh, in that case, in here, previous model which criteria is not applicable because model which criteria is only ap applicable where we have the points in consideration is in the interior, is in the interior of the domain. Right, so that's another one. Now the third motivation I, I found this one uh, that normally uh, to guarantee some kind of stationary conditions. So uh, the global uh, regularity normally probably sometimes is not the need, but only the regularity uh, along uh, certain directions is sufficient. So, so in that way, we still consider the, uh, uh, the, the regularity, not in the global sense, but in the local uh, sense or in the... Uh, so that's kind of uh, motivation I can, I can find out here. So before uh, to present our results, so briefly, so what is uh, uh, the model host criteria? So model host, uh, host criteria here, so we can define for a set, uh, uh, for a multifunction uh, S, now we can define the graph. Now we can define the uh, code derivative in, in, in terms of the normal cone of the graph. Right. So in that way, we, the model have criterion says that uh, the multifunction S is Lipschitz like, uh, has the Lipschitz like property at this X bar of u bar, so u bar belongs to the s of uh, x bar. If and only if the co-derivative of s is only zero uh, at zero point. Right. So that's the uh, well-known uh, model of each criteria. So there are many studies on this one. So that's kind of application uh, model of each criteria. And then, uh, there are some other tools instead of the model of each criteria and other tools uh, can also be applied to study Lipschitz like property. Then uh, the Lipschitz like property actually, uh, we check the literature. Uh, Lipschitz like property relative to a set, there isn't a much study yet. We only found out this uh, when we uh, did our research. We found out this uh, Banco uh, in 2019. They have a, a sufficient condition. Uh, for the uh, for this property, uh, in terms of their uh, uh, directional uh, co-derivative, right. then there are some uh, other property uh, 
uh, in the right uh, in the stability theory uh, related to a set. So I briefly go through this one. So now I come to uh, what we are going to do here. So uh, let me steer fast. All right, now uh, I have talked about this uh, Lipschitz like property. So what it is. So basically, it's now we have this um, uh, multi function, uh, multi function S here. Now we have this uh, X bar, we have a U bar belongs to this uh, S of X bar. All right. So this enclosure here uh, is a property uh, to this Lipschitz like a property, uh, Lipschitz like a property relative to our set. So X here, X here, the capital X here is a set that we are uh, interested. So we only consider here the point uh, X prime and X, there are variables, X prime and X here, they can change within a neighborhood of X bar, but they only also can only be allowed in the X set that we are interested. So this is the definition of this uh, Lipschitz like property. Right. So of course, if we have this uh, capital X, is the whole space that we have this uh, 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 Lipschitz like property, which is also uh, called uh, the Alban property that's uh, introduced by Alban actually in the uh, 1984. Right. We can have also the modulus. So the kappa, this constant kappa here, which is positive, the smallest kappa satisfies this relationship for certain uh, neighborhoods. Is called this uh, graphical uh, modulus of X. Right. Now, uh, what do we do here now? We derive some uh, necessary condition and we uh, get some uh, sufficient condition. So we consider basically the multifunction being restricted on X, right? because now we only have the X which we are interested. So in that case, we can have a, a necessary condition here, which is presented in this uh, uh, inequality here. So X star and the uh, U star uh, is, uh, has this uh, relationship where we have this uh, little head here, which is the kind of a regular uh, 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 co-derivative. That if I'm right. Uh, so in that case, for, for those X star and U star, where the X and the U are the neighborhood of X and X bar and U bar respectively, then we have this maximum, which is less than this uh, U bar, uh, uh, U star, uh, the norm, right? So now what we have here, we have this uh, uh, tangent cone uh, comes in. So basically, remember if we have this uh, X star, uh, belongs to this uh, co-derivative here. So which basically is this X star, U star belongs to a uh, regular normal cone. Remember the regular normal cone definition, which is kind of uh, limit so kind of uh, recursions, which is less than uh, zero, right? So in that way, that, that caution is there is, uh, is including two parts. One part is X, another part is U. All right. So in that case, for the U part, we can get something from this Lipschitz like property definition that the inclusion can be bounded. But for the X part, X part, but remember in the numerator of X bar, the denominator of X bar. So in that case, we can have kind of re, uh, uh, the ratio here, which give us the way to, to derive this kind of U belongs to tangent cone. Remember tangent cone definition is uh, this um, uh, C minus X divided by T, something that the, 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 the limit. So that's how this T, this tangent cone uh, uh, comes in here. Right. So if we get uh, the sufficient condition here. Uh, now we only assume the X here is closed, not a, no convex. So X is, capital X is only a uh, close to a uh, set. So here, if we kind of somehow strengthen uh, that inequality, we make this uh, max term over kind of a larger set, then this also, of course, this X star and the U star here, now X star belongs to the co-derivative 
of this uh, S here. Uh, in that case, we can have this uh, Lipschitz negative property uh, relative to the X. Right, so we, have, we can have a sufficient condition by strengthening this one. Now, if we now uh, assume this the capital X is closer than the convex, now we can get an equivalent condition for what we want. So in that case, now we have this property here. This equipment here now, the right hand side is the same, uh, but the left hand side now is uh, the norm of the projection of the x to the uh, to the tangent cone. So this somehow uh, is derived by the necessary and sufficient condition in terms that the uh, decomposition of the, uh, uh, the, the the decomposition of the projection in the uh, in the uh, in the convex uh, close in the convex sense by use the other projection. So we can get this one here the uh, equivalence. We also we can write down kind of uh, complicated formula for this uh, graphical or modulus. Furthermore, we can uh, define a new uh, co-derivative here. In that case, what do we need to hear? Uh, in comparing uh, with the original co-derivative. So co original uh, co-derivative here is using uh, this extra bracket here. The original uh, co-derivative here is use the uh, normal cone where the X and the U are fixed. Here now, what we did here, we need to use the normal form where the x and the u are in the neighborhoods of the x bar and the u bar. And we project the normal form onto this product space. Now we take the limit shoot. So in this case, now we can define this uh, projectional uh, co-derivative. So in this way, we can somehow previous uh, necessary condition that the equivalence can be redone as this, what we call it, uh, generalized model hold criteria. So in that sense, we can say this three conditions here are equivalent. But it's also, we can write down this uh, Lipschitz uh, graphical uh, modulus uh, as this autonom of this uh, uh, multifunction here. Right. So of course, we can say simply, uh, if we have X bar, so the model Hoch criterion or the global uh, Lipschitz like property. So the key point is X bar is in the interior of the city we are considering, right? So, so what we are doing, the why we are doing the relative to our state. So we are interested in the case where the X bar is in the boundary of the X capital X, right? So of course we can say that if X bar is in the interior of X, now, of course, the projection of co-derivative reduced to the uh, co-derivative. Right now, then we have this uh, generalized uh, model of which criterion uh, go back, goes back to the model of which criterion. Right. Now, we can, uh, the, the, of, co of course, the, the good thing here is for different kind of six x, how, how it is possible that we can compute this projectional uh, co-derivative. So this kind of basically is a kind of a difficult uh, uh, task because the projection normally is difficult to compute uh, as I know. Right. But however, we can only uh, in two cases here uh, where this S now is a single value marking, not a single value marking anymore. So now we have this single value, uh, value marking. Now if X here, is the uh, uh, linear space, is uh, a fine space, uh, a fine set. Now we can compute this projection of co-derivative as this, uh, this term here. Uh, also, if we have this X here is uh, kind of a half space, now we can still compute this uh, projection of uh, co-derivative where we can have two cases. Either we have uh, this one here or this one here. So somehow this is, this is we can compute. Uh, as the uh, as the uh, 
as a comparison of the sufficient condition, uh, so Benko, they derive a sufficient condition for the, by using their uh, directional uh, living team co-derivatives. So their results, we, we write their results in this form here. So basically, of course, their result, of course, is it is uh, stronger because they are, there is kind of uh, sufficient. Our result is kind of equivalent. So of course, about indeed, we can find out an example in here uh, as kind of the uh, solution mapping for uh, uh, LCP. Now, we, for this uh, multifunction, one thing here we can compute this uh, graphical modulus relative to the domain, which is positive. Of course, that means this um, set, this multifunction uh, S is Lipschitz like property. Uh, relative to this domain, right. but however, uh, as in uh, in their case, we can compute their this uh, limiting uh, direction of limiting co derivative is not zero. So that means their condition, sufficient condition, is not uh, applicable. Right. Uh, so actually, but however, uh, computation of this uh, uh, computing of this example is. We need to uh, concert with LCP. There are kind of uh, uh, combinatory uh, slides. There are many kind of quite difficult. Uh, what I want to say here, it's not that simple to compute this one. Uh, uh, so finally, probably I just uh, the little time here. So uh, goes back to the goes, goes back to the uh, uh, problem of the level set. I mentioned, right? So we are interested in this level state, kind of per, perturbated level states with the original function. Now we have this linear kind of perturbated uh, term in here. So we consider this uh, uh, level state. All right, so of course, now we assume this, this, um, this point here, this is basically the alpha bar, all right? Now we assume this point is in the boundary uh, of this uh, multifunction. All right. We somehow need that to, we can, we can uh, have the similar results that somehow that if the state of value mapping, this level state is uh, loud, uh, deep is like a property relative to the domain at this uh, alpha bar, if only if this v bar uh, belongs to a certain state. But what is this set here? Indeed, we found basically this kind of outer limiting sub differential. Here we define this uh, here, but what we require here is that, so vk belongs to this uh, sub differential where xk uh, tends to x bar. But what we did here is this fx K is greater than this point in here. So that's why it's called the outer uh, limiting sub differential. So in this way, we can have this case here. Now, of course, uh, this outer sub differential uh, has been used in studying the modulus of the error bounds. Right. So in that case, as I mentioned, uh, we can have this uh, calculation of the co-derivative a projection of co-derivative as well, we can get this result here, uh, kind of reintegration of the uh, subgradient. So here we consider that point x fx bar here is at the boundary uh, of the domain of S. So in that case, we can still have the level state has this property. Now we have this v bar, uh, v bar here does not uh, belongs to this outer limiting sub differential. We can also write on this Lipschitz like, Lipschitz -like uh, this graphical modulus. Right. Okay, that's the end of my uh, talk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, are there uh, any questions? We might have time for just one, we're a bit over time. Um, well, I, I might just ask one. Um, do you, these, these, these results you got really are holding for rather general functions, aren't they? There's nothing much in particular assumed about F. Uh, 
I'm just wondering, you know, uh, that for some special classes of functions that are a bit more structured to the to the uh, code derivative, and uh, maybe even for things like prox regular functions and so on. I mean, do you think you might there, there might be some something special that can be uh, said about special classes of functions? Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, that's very good uh, possibility uh, for some uh, special class of function we, we can do better. Uh, actually, for us, uh, uh, regular proximal is kind of one case. We actually we did the, the one known uh, problem I mentioned at the beginning uh, for the solution set of the one known. Uh, Actually, we have spent many time to, to study the other problem. Uh, however, uh, we, have, we haven't gotten the, the final result yet. So we get some result about this, if the, the, the solution set of the one law uh, satisfy kind of Lipschitz like property relative to the R plus. But uh, there's still some kind of bugs there we cannot go over. So, Going to concentrate on the special, uh, the, the multifunction with the space structure, I think certainly is a very good point. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, th thanks very much for that talk. I, I mean, I, I think we must move on now because we've gone over time, but uh, uh, um, it, that was very, very interesting. It was a really great talk. Thanks. Uh, so,